1984, I started to work at a small community college in Steubenville, Ohio, called Jefferson Technical College. It then became Jefferson Community College, and then the dreaded Eastern Gateway Community College. Then after 29 faithful years of service, the third president decided to lay me off. So that tells you the kind of people we are dealing with. I will save that part for another video. If I look through one lens, a positive lens, I see a college that started careers, helped people out of poverty, assisted charities, and so on. But then there is the dark lens. In my opinion, the story of the college, the true history of the college, I see some corruption, greed, sexism, lots of nepotism, extreme racism, suicide, and even murder. But the one I have the most blood on my hands is the Endless Buffet. The college collects money through various sources, such as tuition and fees, taxpayers' money through the federal government, state government, a local county levy that miraculously gets renewed decade after decade after decade. We decided to use some of that money to continuously feed ourselves. Tens of thousands of dollars, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars. In the later years, every time I ate something at the college, I had a vision of a single mother with two children working two jobs who couldn't afford new shoes for her daughter, struggling to pay her property taxes, and we took her money and had donuts and juice before a meeting. In my 29 years, I ate thousands of dollars of free food. Roast beef. Ham, potato salad, various pasta salads, mashed potatoes with gravy, chicken, wedding soup, corn, peas, green beans, shrimp cocktails. And if the weather was nice, we'd fire up the grill and make hamburgers and hot dogs. Ham salad on croissants, crackers with various dips such as onion, crab, and spinach. Salad after salad after salad. My, my all-time favorite full-blown turkey meals that would rival any of your Thanksgiving dinners. Cheeses! It was like a rule. We had a party or function. We had to have various flavors of cubed cheeses. Some desserts were frosted carrot cake, cherry pie, apple pie, pumpkin pie, pudding, cream puff balls, boxes of chocolates, various cobblers, tiramisu, just to name a few. Early morning meetings, we were treated to donuts, cream sticks, orange juice, pineapple juice, coffee, bottled water. Pizza was probably the number one food. Sometimes we ordered so much you would see boxes being carried home. At graduation, employees would actually bring Tupperware containers to carry all their cookies home. I carried home bottles of wine. Taxpayers won't let people on food stamps buy wine, but people making up to 100000 a year, you look the other way. Did we ever serve some underaged people alcohol? Oopsie. The first time I ever ate at a Red Lobster was on the taxpayers' or students' dime. Some offices even had water coolers, because you couldn't expect them to drink water from a water fountain like the rest of the peasants. One of the saddest things was when we had meetings in a restaurant. I'm not kidding. Sometimes there were like 10 of us that would have an all-day meeting, so we'd get a room at a restaurant and give ourselves a free meal. Even though we had a college sometimes with around 30 empty rooms, my last contract was around $29 an hour, and I was by far the lowest paid person sitting at that table. Many times, employees were paid to eat their free meals. You would think this would have bought a lot of good employee morale. I don't think it did. I mean, just look. The teachers unionized in the 80s and went on strike for something, I don't know, like 100 days. The staff got fed up years later and they unionized. We had employee satisfaction surveys. And, well, let's just say that not everyone was a happy camper. Also, I'd be surprised if a cream stick is standing between you getting quality people to give you a quality education. The third president would actually send me out to buy dozens of donuts and cream sticks from the downtown bakery, snacks, and make large pots of coffee every time her one friend had an event at the college, and I would stay over to clean up afterwards. I did this several times, 
each time costing the college hundreds of dollars. Still not convinced this is bad behavior? Let's try the old bullets and butter test. If I made you president of the college for a month and gave you $10,000 for education, would you spend it on new furniture to replace those hard, small, uncomfortable kitty desks that they used for decades to make a more conducive educational environment? Or maybe some resources for the often overlooked army of part-time adjunct faculty that the college employed? Or would you treat some employees who made up to 100000 a year to their 10th free meal of the year? If you say all colleges do this and nothing can be done, keep in mind in the 70s you could smoke in line at a grocery store. Clear up to the 80s, Steubenville had open prostitution and gambling. Things can be changed. Nothing is written in stone. The college will probably never say it, but I will. I'm sorry. I wish I could offer you more. While I did complain over the years, I did eat the food. I also wish I could say this is the worst thing we ever did, but it's not even close. But those are for other videos. We spent all of your money, we laughed while we did it, and you did nothing to stop us. For now, it's me, Camroy, here on YouTube.